What is up, friends? My name is Will Myers, and today we're going to build a website in Squarespace in about an hour or so. I've been building websites in Squarespace for about 10 years or so now, and Squarespace has added a lot of new features. Some of that is AI, some of that is design related, and honestly, it's just never been easier than it is today to build a website and just launch it and get it out on the internet. Squarespace makes this process super easy and intuitive, and that's what we're gonna walk through today. Now, if you want a little bit more advanced stuff, that's what I have a website, will-myers.com, and I talk about a bunch more of the advanced coding stuff. Today, we're gonna focus on a lot more of the basics in building out a website. Now let's take a look at what we're gonna be building. Barks and Bubbles, this is fake company we've just totally made up, but it is a in-home dog grooming company. But this is gonna be a good proxy for any services-based business that you might have or you might be helping someone else put together a website for. So this is what we're gonna be doing. We're going from the very beginning, we'll build out all the pages, and then at the end, we'll launch it and we'll put it live on the internet. You can see we got a live URL right there. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Hang with if you wanna see. Let's dive in. All right, let's build a website. Um, so one of the things I really love about Squarespace is the way they do templates. So let's go to the templates page of their website. It'll pop this up. I don't really, feel free to play around with this. It'll just filter out the templates. I don't really want to use this. So I'm just gonna go with, I'm just browsing. Um, so we have a bunch of different template options. Now, I love the way Squarespace deals with templates because they're all the same underlying structure. These are really just starting points. This is how you should think about a lot of things in Squarespace. These are just starting points. So you're not gonna make a wrong decision here. You can find one that you kind of like and wanna go with, but you can turn any one of these templates into any one of the other ones because they all have the same settings. You can change around and adjust. So what I'm gonna do, instead of picking one of these, you're welcome to pick one of these and meet us in the next section, but I'm gonna use their new sort of AI getting started thing. So I'm gonna click getting started right here. All right, and now this is in the AI builder. Let's just hit let's go. It's gonna ask you to create an account. So we'll continue with email. I'll just put in some information here. So we'll do that. And boom, got an account. We're now getting logged in. Squarespace is setting up some things. So this is again their AI builder. I'm gonna put in, uh, what is my site called? Barks and Bubbles. That's what we're gonna do this. It is a dog grooming website. Now it's gonna ask us to build our homepage. What are the sections we might want on our homepage? These sections stack one on top of another. So I want an intro section. Um, you can change the layout here if you want. But again, don't get, don't get really tangled up in this. These are all just starting points. You can make any one of these sections look like any one of the other ones. You can build this one and turn it in. You can start here and turn it into this one. It doesn't matter. We can change all of this once we get going. Uh, so I'm just gonna be go really quick here. Intro section, I want a services, uh, maybe an about and a footer section. How about that? You could scroll up and down too if you want. Next. Now we have the pages. What pages do we want on our website? About and contact, that feels good to me. We can, of course, add more pages later. So I'm gonna hit next. Let's pick a coloring palette. Again, this is something once we get into Squarespace, there's a lot of options in there as well. So don't spend too much time here. Just kind of poke around, see which colors look good. This one looks pretty good. Good little pop of orange, so I'm gonna click that. The next, lastly, our fonts. And again, this is one of those places you can spend a lot of time, but we have a lot more customization inside the Squarespace editor. So I'm just gonna hit Dapifer because that's one that looks good as I was playing around with this earlier. It's one I like and finish. And now it's gonna get us set up here and boom. Template is ready. Now we're gonna walk through the AI part of this where it's gonna create some of the copy for us. All right. so. There, I have pre-created a lot of the content, and by content I mean like the images, the assets, the logo I might use, uh, a lot of the text I'm gonna use on my website. I've written all of that beforehand. I'm not gonna be going over that in this video because that's just gonna take up a lot of time. I'm more focused on the website builder, Squarespace. So I'm just gonna paste in uh, some of this pre-created content that I made. So we're an Atlanta-based mobile dog grooming company that does all sorts of stuff. So paste that in. It's going to rewrite it, use AI to rewrite it. Frankly, I'm not a huge fan of these AI writers. Uh, you know, again, decent enough starting points, but 
I want to go with more with a friendly tone. Decent enough starting points, but I'm probably going to change a lot of this once I get into the website. So don't spend too much time here. Finish. And now it's going to build us a website. Here we go. And voila, here we are in the back end. This is your customized starting point for your website. Before we dive into editing our website, let's kind of get to know what we're working with here. So this is this whole Squarespace back end. And when you first log in, you'll see we have a left side nav right here with some options. We have a top bar up here with some options. Then this is just the web page that we're currently on. This is gonna be what we will edit when you hit the edit button. You can also click around to different pages in your website right in here. So in our left side nav, there's only a few you really need to focus on. That's our website tab. This is gonna be where all of our pages are. We're gonna look at our settings tab and we might dive in a little bit to our asset library. But a lot of these, you don't really need to jump into unless you're actually selling or doing email campaigns and stuff. Don't need to jump into there. So the first three things that I always do whenever I start a new website are I want to get it to a form where I can look at it on my phone, maybe my iPhone, so I can do some testing, or I can send it to someone else and they can look at what I'm building live. So let's look up at our URL right up here. So it's for our URL is this subdomain, which is just a randomly generated string of words or not words up here, followed by squarespace.com, then followed by config. So this, if you put this in, it'll bring you back here to your backend if you're logged in. But if we expand our website right here into preview mode, you'll see that backslash config goes away. Now this is a URL, I'm gonna copy that, that I can share with other people. Now be aware, if you're open this, opening this up in your same window right here, just like in a new tab, it's gonna bring you back into the back end because it knows you're logged in on this browser and blah, blah, blah. But if you open this up in a new window, in a new window, incognito window, something like that, just throw it in there. This is the page we're brought to. It's a private site. It says we're in a private site. And this is how Squarespace works. Once you pay, this won't be private anymore, or at least you'll have the option to turn it out of private and turn it to a live site. Um, but before we've paid, we also have the option to turn this into a password protected site. And then you could just share that password with anyone. Also, we have the option of changing this random gibberish, this random string of words into something that makes a little bit more sense for us. So let's go do those two things. Back here on our website, I'm gonna go down here to settings and then site availability. Now this is, again, once you've upgraded, you can publish your website, make it public so anyone can see it, but without paying, we can still password protect it. I like to do a simple, simple password, just that makes it easy for me to remember and for other people to, to just get in so they're not dealing with things. So I'm just gonna go one, two, three, gonna hit save. And now let's go back to this website, our Gobi Fish refresh and you see it's password protected. And I can put in one, two, three and get in. Da, da, da. And now this is the website just right of the backend and I can share that URL. But let's make that URL a little easier to share. I'm gonna go to domains, domains, and then built-in domains. There's that Gobi fish. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna say barks-bubbles. And let's see if that is available. I'm gonna hit confirm. Yes, let's change it. Oop, it's not available. Let's do barks in bubbles. How about that? With one dash, not two dashes. And there we go. That looks like it was available. It has changed my, my domain up here. And if I refresh that, it's gonna be nowhere because the website doesn't exist, but I can type in barks in bubbles. And now I can share this with someone and give them the password one, two, three, and they can see my progress as I'm going through the website. Right, and one last thing, let's update our fav icon, which is our browser icon, what shows up right here. By default, it's the Squarespace little block, but we can change that. Again, back into settings, just in our website tab, go to fav icon right there and hit upload right here. And we're just gonna upload a file and I'm in my, my files. Again, I've pre-created all the files that I'll need for this. Here's a favicon that looks kind of cute. We're gonna use that little guy. It's gonna upload. Then I'm just gonna hit save. And we might not see it immediately in our back end. Let's see if refreshing it gives us anything. No, it doesn't. But on the live site, as we share it with someone, this should update automatically. And there we go, we got a nice little favicon. Now we're good to share. One quick note. 
Uh, this is what my backend looks like right now. Squarespace has been changing and moving stuff around, so yours might not look exactly like this. If it doesn't, just hit the search icon and just type in something that you're looking for, favicon, and it'll bring you right there. And a quick overview of our nav, top nav area. If you hit edit, it's gonna bring you into the editing mode of whatever page that you're on. You can play around with this. We'll go over this next section right here in this video. Uh, we have mobile view right here, pretty obvious. Then we have site styles right here. And for the life of me, I'm not sure why that isn't in our left-hand nav over there, but this is where we can change global styles throughout our website, like fonts and colors, and we can set some global animations and button styles and stuff. So this is where you might have some fun playing around. But again, we'll go over more of this in a later section. All right, so now let's look at our website panel because this is where we can add, remove, delete pages and adjust our main nav, what pages show up in our main nav here. So I'm gonna go to website and you'll see there's three different sections in here. First, we have our main navigation area. Any pages that we add or put in here are gonna show up in our main navigation. Next, we have our not linked area. And really, this is your not main navigation area. Any pages that are in here are on your website. They're live if you put it into your URL, put the address into your, your browser, you'll get there. If you have a button, it can get over there, but they're just not showing in your main nav. Then we have util your utilities areas down here. We're not really gonna be playing around too much with these, but feel free to jump in and poke around and see what, they're, what they do. The website tools, this is where you can inject some code and stuff. Okay, so let's get our main nav situated over here. So we clicked contact, you can see it's on our website. If I click into it, here's our contact page that was pre-generated for us. But I want that in my header up here. So I'm just gonna click and drag it up here to the main navigation. And now contact is up there. So that's great. Another thing that I would actually like to have, I said no services maybe earlier, uh, but I would like to have a services page in here. So I'm gonna hit this plus icon. And then we have this list of options of different page types we can add. So we're gonna mostly focus on these two right up here, blank pages or page layouts. These are, again, just Squarespace starting points for these layouts. But then you have a bunch of other options of things you can get started on your website, like blogs and stores and portfolios and stuff. But we're not gonna play around with this in our tutorial today. So I'm just gonna hit blank page and I'm gonna type this. By default, it's highlighted, uh, but let's say it's not and you, we need to change this. So each one of these pages, if you hover over it, we get a little gear icon and we can change the settings of that page. So I'm gonna hit the gear icon and then it brings up all of the settings that we can adjust. So we have our page title right here. I want that actually to say services, of course, and whatever we put in here in our page title, that's gonna be what shows up in here in our browser tab after I hit click save. Uh, navigation title, I usually just always match these. I don't really find a good reason not to match these, but our navigation title is gonna be what shows up in our navigation, our Squarespace navigation over here. And then our URL slug, this is gonna be, this is an important one too. Change this to whatever you want. That's, you know, anything after the .com on your website. Uh, that's gonna be what this is. So I'm gonna change those three. And boom, now we have our services page. Now I actually want about to be first, services next, and then I'd like a call to action button up, up here. So let's sort of see how to do that. So I can make services next by just clicking and dragging, very simple. And our contact button, I want this to look different. I want this to say, well, first I want this to be book now. Contact's a little stale for me. So let's change that. I'm gonna go into the gear icons, change those things. Book now, right here. Book now, and then same here. Book now. You can't have any spaces in URLs, so any spaces, you just by convention, we just use a dash in between. So let's get, click save. And I actually want this, like I said, to be a call to action. So the way we can do that is actually in the editor. We can edit any the header by any page. Any page that we're on, doesn't matter. Just hit edit and then hover over your header and hit edit site header. And now we can add new elements to our header over here. I'm gonna go to add elements. Let's toggle on button. And once that is on, we can click on our button right here and we can change what it says and we can add a link. So I'm gonna say book now, and I want this to link to our book now page. So I'm gonna attach a link, I'm gonna do backslash. When you hit backslash, anything after this is on your website. So this is just, this is anything that is, any URL that is currently on your website is gonna show up right here. So I'm just gonna hit book now, because that's what I want it to move to. 
and there we go. And now I just need to get rid of this book now because that's a bit redundant. So I'm gonna hit save, exit, and then move this book now into the not linked. And now we have a nice little nav. Now you may have seen some other things that were in here. Let's edit our page and edit our header. We have some other elements you could toggle in. You can throw in some social icons if you wanna add those. We can also hit over here and go to edit design and we can change the layout of our nav. So maybe we want the logo in the middle, some links over here and our call to action button over there. We have a few different layouts we can play with. There's a bunch of settings over here that you can adjust as well. So right now, this is kind of what I wanna keep it with. Uh, the color style is adaptive. We'll talk about that a little bit later and why it needs to be there. Um, but so I'm gonna leave it there. But as of right now, our header's looking good. And lastly, let's talk about changing the home page. So let's say I don't really love this home page layout. Well, Squarespace gives us a bunch of page layouts we can choose from. Let's hit this plus button, go to page layouts, and there's a bunch of different options you can choose from and some categories over here. I'm just gonna go with this first one right here. It says general one. I'm gonna rename this to home, do, do, do. And now let's set this as the home page. So I can hit this gear icon of this new home scroll down and say set as home page confirm and now right here let's go over to our live website right let's refresh the live website and then our home page is the new one that we have if you click on the logo it would bring you here but a couple things i want to point out whenever you switch home pages go to your old home page change the url to something like dash old something like that and this way your new home page can be just backslash home, a nice clean URL. I always appreciate the clean URL. So we're gonna revert back to this. Uh, this is our homepage, but I just wanted to show you that before we moved on. All right, we've been doing a lot of the boring stuff, just getting things set. Now let's get into the fun stuff, which is actually editing our website. So again, on any page that you're on, you can just hit, hit this edit button and we're pulled into the Squarespace editor. Now this is how Squarespace works. This is how the Squarespace editor works. First you have stacked sections on top of one another and you can see that we have this hero section, this first section right at the top. Then we have the services section. Then we have an about section with some items in it. And then we have our footer down below. And this is honestly how most websites around the internet works. Let's go to apple.com if I can spell it. Um, they're probably still promoting. Here we go. So we have the Vision Pro promo right there and then an iPhone 15 Pro section and then a Valentine's Day section. So it's these stacked sections right on top. That's how most websites work. And then within it, there is the content. So there's an image little sec item in here and then we have a text item with two button items. Same thing here, we have a text item with two button items and then an image. So that is how these work. So you have these stack sections and then items within it. Squarespace calls those items blocks. And so that's what we have here. We have a section right here and we have an image block right here. You can click and drag this image block and we have text blocks. We have all sorts of blocks you can add. So let's play around with some things. I'm going to just delete what Squarespace had here. I'm actually going to remove that entire first section and we're going to start from blank. So I'm going to hit add section. And again, starting points. Squarespace has so many different starting points you can go from, but I like starting from a blank section instead of one that's in one of these categories. But there's a lot of cool ones in here. But I'm going to go add a blank section. And now let's add some blocks. Let's add those elements within the section. So what I wanna have is an image over here on the right side. So I hit add block and go to image. And now we can add an image. Let's upload a file. And I'm gonna say maybe this grooming one image that I have. So this looks kind of cute. Now, any one of these, uh, these little nubbins right here, I think that's the official word, nubbins, you can just click and drag and sort of move them around. And you'll notice that they kind of snap, this blue line snaps to this grid that's in the background. And if you let go, that grid disappears and the image stays. Oh, don't forget about mobile view. We won't, Squarespace. So one thing to see, if you hit G on your keyboard, you'll see that grid pop back up. Now, this is how Squarespace, the editor, works. You have this 24 column grid on desktop, and then we have blocks on there. And these blocks snap 
to the grid. This allows us to keep really, really good alignment on our website. And if you have good alignment, that hit gets like 80% of your website looking good. So it keeps things really nice. So I can click and drag. I want this image to be a little larger. And then any block that we add, if you hover over it, you'll see this little edit icon. You can click on that. Then you can dial in, you can fine tune some of the items, some of the settings for whatever block it is. So I'm gonna to go to design for this image and hit fill. And that'll fill up the entire block with the image. By default, the images are only going to keep the aspect ratio in which we uploaded them. But if we go fill, it's gonna fill up that whole block. So let's do a nice little dog right there. I'm gonna hit add block. Let's add some text. And I want my title, which is barks and bubbles. This is my, or my business name, I should say. Let's make this a little bit larger. And so let's open this up. Let's, if you highlight some text, you can, we have a bunch of different paragraph options. So I want this to be big and bold. By default, every page, you want one heading, one heading one on it, and then the others should be heading two, three, four, but you really only want one heading one. So I'm gonna do this, and honestly, this isn't going to be big enough. I want some really big text. So we have this other option in there. If you highlight the text, this expand text button, the scale text is what Squarespace calls it. So I'm gonna scale it. And now the text will be as large as our text block, our, this blue line. So I want this to be nice. Bark some bubbles, we can move it there. And actually this is a bit redundant because we have our title, our, our business name right up here. So I want this to be more of like uh, what it is that we do. So I'm just gonna grab some other code, some other copy. And I want this to say luxury grooming because that's what we do, right? Then underneath, I want sort of a subtitle. So let's add another block. I'm gonna add another text block, do, do, do. Now let's, I want this to actually say, in the comfort of your own home. We don't, we don't want our pups here feeling bad. You know, we want them happy in the comfort of their own home. So this is what I'm gonna do. So one thing that I've seen other people do that's not really good practice is you do want, if, you if you're using text, you don't want your text blocks to overlap like this. Sometimes the alignment might make it look like you want them to overlap like this, but this is bad practice because on different size devices, this text will go on top of one another and it won't look very good. So just that's just a little word of warning. So if you did have something like this and you wanted to align two text blocks that were on top of each other, if you click on a text block, you have this alignment button and I wanna align this down to the bottom and I wanna align this right there up to the top. You could of course do center if you want to, uh, but I'm just gonna do top and bottom. Now, a couple of other things. Let's make this, first of all, this text, it's not really good. So I wanna change the color of our section. I wanna change the color of this text. Now you could highlight the text and change the color right there, but by default, don't do that. Don't jump there if you, unless you absolutely have to. By default, go to your edit section and go to colors. Now this edit section is going to edit all the settings of this section. So you can change uh, the padding, this padding, this, this spacing between uh, our fluid engine block, our grid here and the next section, you can go small, medium, large. Um, or you can change other things like you can add a background image or background video to your entire section. But what I like is this colors tab. So we have, this is how Squarespace coloring works. You have 10 different color themes set. We'll get into this in the site styles area, um, but you can choose one of these 10 different color themes and these color themes for that section have predetermined colors for each one of the elements that you might have like text. So I wanna use this. I still want the white background, but I like my text being orange. So I'm gonna keep it like that. Now this image, we can make this a little better. Let's double click into the image and go to design and give it a corner radius, a little radius around our corners here. I'm gonna go maybe 40. This is in pixel value if that matters to you, if that's something you're interested in. So this is starting to look pretty good. And now I want my uh, buttons, two buttons here. So let's add a block here. Let's add a button. And what is my design supposed to look like looking off screen real quick? This is gonna say book now, book now. And I am going to attach this button. I want when someone clicks on it, obviously to go somewhere. So let's go to backslash. Remember backslash, it's gonna pull up all of the items. I'm just gonna start typing it in and it'll filter it for me, book now. 
and there we go. So now this is looking like a pretty good uh, uh, main section. So one thing I wanted to point out, we talked about the header color styling. Notice how our, our navigation up there, it turned orange as we switched our color theme of our section. Notice it changes color. So that's what that adaptive setting was in here. If we hit edit design and go to color, this means it will adapt. The colors of this section will adapt to the first section on your page. And that, by my experience, unless you want a set fixed color uh, for your header, this is the best setting to have. So here we go. Now we got a pretty decent looking uh, hero section on our homepage. And I thought we were done, but I got a couple notes from my wife, and this is going to happen often as you're building a website. You're going to get notes from other people. Uh, this should probably be a little bit smaller. Let's make this image a bit bigger. And notice the we have all this like lighter space over here where our text would show through a little bit more. We have this pink and the orange, so the colors are kind of clashing like this. So this is a nice handy little feature. If you double click on your image, you can edit any image that you have. So I'm gonna hit edit, and then we can change some of your image color settings, but we can also go to this crop size, and I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna flip it across the x-axis, and it does this weird, this is just a glitch in Squarespace right now. It's not gonna be smooshed like this. It's gonna say save, and it's gonna give you this warning. This will be permanent, but don't worry, again, Squarespace duplicates this image, so it's like permanent, but for the new duplicated image, like it's totally fine. So just hit save. Do, 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 do. It's going to work its magic. It's doing some stuff. And uh, now it's flipped. And this is a little better. Now I can read luxury grooming a little bit more. I might want to pull this down a little bit like that. There we go. All right, let's jump into the fun stuff, the colors and the fonts and stuff. So Squarespace puts all of that stuff in the site styles area. And I'm, as I mentioned earlier, that's right up here. Now, as I make changes in here, it affects your entire site globally. And this is actually really nice because this means if I design a page out one way and say, actually, I don't wanna go with this orange color. I wanna go with maybe a red color. You can just dial into your site styles and we can say, I wanna go red. And then everything on my website kind of turns to that red. It's really, really nice. Now, there's a lot of different, I wish I hadn't have done that because now my orange, I'm not sure what it was, but we'll just stick with that. Uh, th there's a lot of different things you can play around with. So when I'm doing this, let's hit save and exit. I usually like to build a brand page and then on that brand page, I'll put all the elements that might change. And so that's what I have here. If we hit edit, you see I got a text block with all of my eight different text sizes right here. And then I have a button block and I didn't show this earlier, but if you go into your button block, to the design tab, you have three different button styles you can work from. So I've got my three different button styles right there. So now as we edit our site styles, let's play around here. All right, first let's jump into our fonts. So if you jump into the fonts tab, you see the, the font pairing that we have right now. Again, these are just presets that Squarespace comes up with. You can click into this and here's a bunch more presets that Squarespace has, has created for us. And these are all kind of great. They all look really good, but you can go even deeper with all of them by our global textiles. So Notice our, our text is broken up into kind of two groups, maybe three. Our headings, one, two, three, four, and our paragraphs, one, two, three, and then we have a monospace. So our headings, let's jump into that. We can change the font family of all of our headings right here. And if you click into family, you'll see browse all fonts. These will be the fonts that you're currently using on your website. There are probably a thousand, look at this little uh, scroll indicator right here. I mean, Squarespace has so many different fonts you can play around with. So there's obviously a search button. You can play around with those. Maybe we wanted them all to turn to Sanchez right there. There we go. But I like Dapifer, so we'll leave that. And then you can change the sizing of each one of these four. And notice this is just some, some 4.6 REM value. You don't really need to know what that means. All you need to know is this size is going to be responsive to different screen sizes. So your desktop is gonna look like this, but on mobile, it's not gonna be the same size as desktop. This is a little bit smaller. And this is the reason why we use some a value like REM, R-E-M, uh, because it keeps responsiveness a little bit better. So feel free to dial that in however you want. I'm gonna leave that there. Next, down here in the assigned styles, you could really get 
right into the details of every little element, every little block you might have. So we have our menu block, our newsletter block, quote block, form block, all sorts of different blocks that you might add to your website. You can dial in the very specific font sizing, font styling that you want for each one. So that's fonts. Next, let's talk about colors. And so, like I mentioned earlier, we have 10 different color themes. If you go into the, the, this colors panel, you'll see first we have our basic palette. Once you have this set, you really don't wanna change it very much because there's just thousands and thousands of other little settings that it might, that might get adjusted that we'll dive into next here in a second. But we have these five basic colors for our palette, and then each one of these gets duplicated, so we'll have 10. And, and those are the styles that we have to work with, the 10 different color themes that we have. So you can import an image. There's a lot of different options here, but pick your 10 colors. Usually you want like a white one, a very white one, and a very black one on either end, and then a darker one here, a lighter one here, and then a brand color, but kind of play around with whatever you want. There's some other options in here as well. And then once you've done that, like I mentioned, we have these color themes, right? So this section right here, Let's hit save, exit, edit. We go to edit section. This color theme, this section right here is a lightest one. Let's target that one. So this is the lightest one color theme, but you can also change it to one of these others, right? So we'll just leave it on lightest one for now. Hit save, exit. Go back into our site styles and our colors. And now if we dial into our lightest one right here, if we click on that, it'll give you all the different color options you can change. And as you, if you change it here, it will change it on every lightest one section throughout your entire website. And so this gives you a lot of fine grain control over the coloring of your website while maintaining consistency throughout your entire website. This is a huge benefit of Squarespace because consistency equals good design here. So let's finally get into our buttons and change some of the buttons we want. So our buttons right here, if we click into there, you can add some different options. We have three different tabs up here to, to change whichever one we want. Uh, we can change the shape maybe to a bit of a flatter square, or you can have it no fill. If you have no fill, you'll need to add an outline probably. So we have these outlines. And notice our, our call to action button up here is gonna match our primary button there. So you can also change the horizontal spacing and the vertical spacing uh, within the button. Let's go back to that pill, that filled pill. Uh, and you can do custom corners, all sorts of fun things in here. But honestly, I kind of like this. The only thing I don't like is that the text of this learn more is bigger than my learn more here. So let's go to our secondary because that's the secondary button. Go into text and then let's pull down the size of that text, maybe to one rim. There we go. That looks good. A lot of people like to go uppercase too with these buttons. I don't know. You could do whatever you want. Play around. Enjoy. So that is the site styles area. All right, and a couple last minute things. My font uh, weight got changed as I went in there. So let's go back to fonts, uh, headings. Let's go to our weight and make that 700. That probably looks pretty good. Let's go back to fonts. Um, and then the other thing uh, is colors. Colors for buttons always confuses a lot of people because you might intuitively and honestly rightly think, oh, I'm gonna change the color of my button. Let's go into the buttons area, but it's not gonna be there. It's gonna be in our colors area. So once you're in the, let's go to lightest one. I'm gonna jump into lightest one. It's another good thing about the colors area. If you hover over your elements, notice the thin blue line. That means we can click on it and it will error out and bring me into the back end. So maybe that doesn't work right now. So Squarespace might change that. We need to scroll down until we can find our button. So there's our button. So this is where we can change, change our primary background color. So this is where we change our button colors right in there. Just jump in and do, 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 do. And then if you don't like something, um, looks like you're probably stuck with it. Nope, you can go back over here to palette and then click your main theme color. So there we go. All right, friends, now we're rolling. We got our hero section and our main nav sort of dialed in here. We got our styles dialed in. Uh, let's finish building out the rest of this homepage. So just gonna go into edit. And honestly, don't really like these sections that Squarespace has started me with. It's a good little boilerplate, but we're just gonna start from scratch. So I'm gonna delete both of those. Now let's add a new section and start from blank. Now this next one, I like doing sort of colors, uh, uh, jumpy, just sort of white and then brand colors. So let's make this section uh, colors. We'll go to bright. 
There we go. And now I want an image on this side and like an about me, some content over here. This is this next one's probably good for about me. So add a block, let's add an image. What image do we want to use? Let's use one from our photo shoot. This one's pretty good. That's a cute little puppo, right? And now that looks great. Let's add a text block. And this is gonna be a little bit about who we are, right? So I'm gonna, gonna keep it nice and cute. So this is a heading two, some heading two text, right? Now this is another fun thing with text. If you've clicked on the block, so this, this menu's up, or you just click on the blue outline of any block, if you Command C, then Command V, it will duplicate that block. Well, text is hard because it doesn't know whether you're, you are doing the block or the text, but there we go. So you can use these, these keyboard shortcuts, which is really nice. So let's just, we want this to be some, some text. Woo, we don't want it that big though. So let's change it back to paragraph one. Maybe let's go a little bit smaller, paragraph two. So there we go, that looks nice. And we want a little button right here that might bring people to our about page. So let's add block, add a button, move that guy over there, double click, say about me. Um, and then let's attach a link that's backslash about. And there we go, now we got a nice little button in there. Now, here's another fun thing. Uh, right now I'm using the design full, fill, and that means this button is gonna fill up the entire space of the button block, whatever I drag it to. But you can do fit, and the button will only be as large as the text that is around it. We could align it to the left. Uh, one thing to note about fill is that as we get smaller, as the page gets smaller, let's hit save really quick. If I uh, if I excuse all the code here, this is just a quick way to make the screen get smaller. Notice as the screen gets smaller, that button gets smaller. Um, and that's because it's taking up the, the whole size of that grid, the grid that's in here. If we hit G, we'll see that grid. Those grid columns get smaller. The grid columns sort of flex to keep the whole website responsive. So that's just something to know and be aware of. Now, what would be nice if we had, since we're called barks and bubbles, if we sort of kept with this bubbly theme with these soft curved edges. So let's double click into our image. First, I'm seeing a little space. Let's go to design and go to fill. Uh, and actually not fill. Why don't we go to shape and do a different shape? Let's do maybe this sort of bubbly square type thing. Um, and this looks nice. And one nice thing, once you've done shape, if you just move it, it's gonna keep the aspect ratio of uh, the, whatever shape it is, unless we're in our, our image settings, we toggle, turn our stretch on. And now it's just gonna stretch to fill that shape within there so we can change this to be whatever we want. So maybe, maybe something like this. How about that? And let's make this actually, let's make this dog a little bit bigger. I'm getting some off screen instructions here from my wife who's a better sort of designer than I am. Um, and then let's make the spacing between these sections right here. So if I turn off the grid, this uh, vertical spacing, let's go to edit section, small, make it a little bit smaller. How about that? Okay, next, what's fun is let's do, it's called a marquee block. Some people call it a marquee or a scrolling block. We'll just add some scrolling text right below here. So I'm gonna hit add section. Let's add a blank section. So it's like this scrolling thing. Add a blank section. Now, I want this scrolling block to go the entire width of my page. Notice we're kind of set. If I turn on our grid, our grid is 24 columns across, centered in the middle of our screen, and we have this extra space on the outside. Now, you can, if you wanted to, let's quick, quick sidebar, design, if we went to fill, you can pull images to, or any block, to the full width of the page. And if you wanted it to be the full height of the section, you can hit edit section, go to toggle off fill screen, and there we go. Now it's gonna be the full height of the section too. Um, but that's not what I want for my design, but that's just an important thing to know, to be aware of. So let's, let's get this back, shape, stretch, there we go. So now we're looking good. So down here I want to go full width, I want a marquee block or a scrolling block to go across this whole section. So let's add a block, let's say scrolling, there's our, our default content. I'm gonna pull this all the way across. I'm gonna move the amount of rows all the way up. 
Uh, by default, it's just gonna center our content in there. If I wanted the content to be more up on the, the higher edge of our section, we could align it to the top, edit our section and align the content to the top or the bottom. But we're gonna do center, and actually we don't wanna do either one of these, we wanna do that fill right here. So now we don't want our scrolling block to say dream it, we want it to say barks, right? And then we want something else in here. So if you hit, I think it's option command spacebar on a Mac, nope. That was the wrong one. If you hit control command spacebar on a Mac, it'll bring up your emoji board. So I'm gonna do, let's get some bubbles, right? Let's put in some bubbles in there and then let's do a dog. We'll do this dog. Do, do, do. And then I'll cut that and paste it right there. So now we have barks there, then a dog with some bubbles. And then I'm gonna say barks and bubbles there. And then after it, let's do another one of these, but I want to use a different colored dog. We'll use this cute little poodle thing uh, right there. And there we go. And let's slow down that marquee block, that scrolling block. Let's go to that and then add a little more spacing. So this is how pretty much everything works in Squarespace. You have these sections, you can edit styles, edit settings of that sections, then within the sections you can add a block and then edit the settings of that specific block. So next I'm gonna add services. I'm gonna be moving faster here as we go through, as you kind of get the idea, our services. We want this to be a heading two. Remember we don't want, and center that up, we only want one heading one per page. That's kind of good SEO practice for doing that. So let's now add our services right here. We're gonna do a grooming service. Um, let's do this one where he's giving him, pampering him a little bit. And then I'm gonna add another block down below that explains the service with a title. Um, let's, let's copy our off-screen text right there and paste it in right there. I want our posh pup, that's gonna be the title. Let's do it in H4. And then if that automatically went to H4, I don't want that to automatically go there. We'll make that H1 and then that'll be paragraph two. Let's center this up right there. Pull it to the bottom. Remember, you don't want to overflow blocks unless it's intentional. Uh, if this block, if this image isn't, if you have that space there, you just got to turn it to fill. We just got to fill up that image. We also want to do some borders around here. Let's do that and now add a button down below that is going to bring us to, and let's get that all that centered up to the book page. I'm going to say book now. Bada bing, bada boom. And then underneath it, we can say learn more. So let's add another text block that will bring us to the services page. Learn more. So this will bring us to our contact page where, where you can you know, book with us. Uh, and our learn more will bring us to our services page that we have yet to build out. And let's do that. So there we go. This is looking kind of good. And I actually want to get a, get a little more spacing. So let's vertically align the content within that block down below. So this is looking good. And what we can do for our next, let's turn on our grid. Let's get this aligned kind of where we want it to go. And then click and drag. You can highlight and select multiple blocks at once and then command C, command V. And now I've duplicated all of it. And now I just need to go in and replace all of our images and stuff. So let's do another grooming image here. Let's paste in our, let's wait for that to upload. Maybe that'll upload in the background. I'm not entirely sure. Let's paste our new content in there. Then these book and learn more, those can go to the same places. Let's turn off our grid. Looking pretty good. I want a little spacing here. Do, do, do. Highlight all of it, move it down. Great, and now lastly, let's do our call to action section. So this is just generally a good thing to do whenever you're building a website is have the last section of a page just sort of the main call to action. So when people hit the bottom, what is the thing you want them to do? So that's what we're going to do here. I'm gonna make it really big text that says, uh, get your groom on, get your groom on. My wife and her marketing words, get your groom on. 
Um, we're gonna add a background image to this. So let's edit our section right here. Let's go to background and then add an image, upload an image. And let's see what's a good sort of, I want a dog that's looking at me. That's kind of cute, right? Let's do that. Let that upload. And now we have a full width image in the background. And I want this to be more closely aligned to my brand. So let's change the theme, the color theme of this section to bright two. And there's still this, the text, the white text on sort of this orangish bash background, still hard to read. So what I'm gonna do is go back to our background tab and change the opacity, increase the opacity of the overlay. Let's go to like 70 or something. And now let's add that actual call to action button. Put that right here in the middle, make sure it's vertically aligned in the center. Book now, backslash book now. And lastly, to add a little bit of fun and life to our website, let's add an effect to our background image. So edit our section, background, going to go to image effects. There's a bunch of different effects you can choose from. One of the good ones is this parallax effect. If you click on that, as you scroll, it's going to kind of move with you. And I kind of want this dog peeking up at me kind of as I get down. This is a little too much. So let's adjust the focal point of our background image. Maybe pull it down a little bit, maybe to like, and it's jumping around, or maybe I need to pull it up. It is quite jumpy today. And I want it kind of, I want him kind of like poking out at me right there. Let's see if we can, this is, Squarespace is being quite jumpy. Okay, there we go. That's probably, ooh, there we go. Now he's kind of like looking in at me. All right, so there we go. This is our homepage. Homepage is now built, looking good, looking fun. Next, we gotta build out the rest of our website. All right, so at this point, you're probably feeling pretty good about yourself uh, and you might wanna share it with someone. Well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna send it to them and they're gonna get it on their phone. They're gonna look at it on their phone and this is what they're going to see. Let's go to mobile view. Now, it's not horrible, but this is probably not what you're going for. We have this like misalignment stuff there. Um, this, they're gonna say, oh, this, good job, good job. So let's make this look a little nicer. So when we're in the mobile view, let's hit edit. Couple things to be aware of. If you hit G, that grid, we still have that same grid, but it's an eight column grid on mobile. So at about, you know, somewhere around here, it breaks into this mobile view where we have this eight column grid and we can move stuff around on here. So it's very much the same thing. So I'm just gonna click and drag, highlighting multiple elements at once. Uh, we could, I want my image right up here to be a little bit bigger here. You could also do this, some overlapping stuff. Uh, but I'm not really gonna do that here. We're gonna turn off that grid. Um, we could pull this to be a little bit larger too and center this up so it's a little more focused on what we're looking at. Check out our Pawsome brand. Let's move that down. And there are still a few issues. Notice as I move blocks around, it sort of adds space that doesn't really need to be there. Um, so I'm just be aware some of that stuff happens. Maybe we can go full width. We can still do that. That's kind of fun. Uh, we'll do that. Actually, that probably doesn't look very good with the edges. So we're going to pull that in. Give a little more space and maybe add some more spacing just all around. Maybe you add one row of spacing. I want this again to go full width. Edge to edge. Services. Book now button. Let's just move that right into the middle. Um, let's pull our content pull all of the content in this section down a little bit so I have some more space to work with. We'll pull that service down and pull this down, make our services image a little more square like that. Push it back up, that looks good. And maybe one block, one row of spacing in between each. And then let's turn on our grid. And I wanna add two rows of spacing so we'll move all of this just up one. Center, 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 keep things centered. Keep the alignment good, that's kind of what I'm going for. Um, and then get your groom on, that's looking pretty good. We could go, since this is a call to action, maybe we wanna go more full width with that right there. And there we go. So this is looking a lot better than what we initially had 
as we went into, as, as if we had sent it to someone. Okay, and a couple more things to be aware of for mobile. If you move things around in mobile right here on this grid, it's not gonna change anything on desktop. And on mobile, we're just kind of a rearranging the placement and the sizing of things. But if you change the content, it will be different. If you replace this image with another image, your desktop image will also be replaced. This one will also be replaced. If you change this text from to not be scaled, on desktop, it's also not going to be scaled anymore. So all the, the content and, and the, the settings you've added to these blocks, those are the same. Those are consistent between desktop and mobile. It's just the placement and the sizing that you get the, the ability to adjust. And I will say this is one little caveat. You can adjust the vertical alignment of our text blocks and it won't affect on, on mobile. So we'll push that to center, right? And then we'll look here and this one is still down. So you can change the vertical alignment of text blocks, but that's really it. All right, now let's talk about our footer. It's kind of the last thing to round out our homepage here. If we go into our editor, our footer's a little different because you got to hover over it to edit the footer. So we're just going to hit edit. And once we're in here, we have access to different footer sections that are different from the, the section templates in the main page editor. So if we hit add section, we have all these different ones. You can add multiple. You don't have to just have one. You can have multiple in here. Um, I don't really, this one's not really relevant to me. I don't need hours. So I'm gonna get rid of that. But of course, these all work like fluid engine sections. If you hit your grid, you still have your same grid there. So these work just like any other section. Um, this actually isn't the one that I want. So let's hit add section. Um, I really just need the title links and my contact info. So something like this. Um, again, that's just the default stuff. So let's remove that other footer. Let's go into here, say barks and bubbles. That happens sometimes if you're doing, uh, if you're editing text, it sort of brings the next line up. So I'm going to highlight all of that. Um, these, and this is something I have not done yet. Our buttons, links, don't have to just be buttons. You can do that for text links. So here is just some text right here. If we hit edit, um, or let's just get rid of all the links on here. I'm going to remove those there. If you just highlight some text and hit our link button, uh, you can just add a link right in there. So I'm going to do that right now. About, that's good. Contact, I want this to actually say services. So we're going to do that. Highlight backslash services. And then our follow, don't really want that. I want this to say book now. And just to keep keep it looking good, I don't need that necessarily to be a call to action. And then if I'm going to put in my email address and phone number, I would put that in. You put in your email address, just type it in like normal and then add a link. And then we have this other option in here where we can add our email address. So it'd be email at email.com, whatever, whatever your email address is. Just put that in there. Um, and then now as, as if you click on that, it will pull up an email. If someone clicks on that, it will pull up an email in whatever default email uh, system that they're using. Same thing with phone numbers. If you just add a link, just do phone number, you can put a phone number in, and if someone clicks on it, uh, if they're on their mobile, it'll pull up the, their, their phone number on their, on their mobile device. If they're on desktop, it might pull up like FaceTime or something, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but we will just leave this as is. I'm just gonna put in 555. Let's go back to our phone. We'll just put in that number, 555-555-5555. How about that? That looks good. All right, so now our whole homepage with everything is in there. All right, so we have our basic website, our homepage with footer, everything is built out, we're good to go. If you feel confident, if you know what you're doing and you wanna just take this and run, you are more than welcome to go do that. If you wanna learn how to launch this, just fast forward to the end of this video. Right now, I'm gonna build out the services, the about and the book now page. And it's gonna be a lot of what we just saw, but with different blocks, I'm gonna show you some other fun things with different block types. And I'm gonna use some different sections as well. There's some unique sections that we can use. So stick with me if you wanna learn those. Uh, but if you wanna just fast forward, you are more than welcome to do that. So next up is build building that services page. Now, right now, as we added this, this is just a blank website, a blank page right here. If we wanted to get some ideas, we could hit this plus icon, go to page layouts, and look at some of the designs that Squarespace has. Now, again, it's important to remember, these are just starting points. There's nothing, if I go to the services tab, 
there's nothing special about these services pages. They don't connect in any unique way to other things on your website. These are just interesting little layouts that Squarespace designers have said, hey, this is kind of a cool way to do services, so why don't we just throw this and give this as a starting point for people? So let's just throw this on here just to get an idea of what it might what it might look like. Uh, we have our header section up here. I can like definitely need kind of a header section. I really like these dividers, these kind of, kind of so soft curve dividers here. That's really nice. Um, there are these text highlight things. If we go into, this is just a regular text block, but the highlight tab is turned on and you have all these different options for highlighting text. Um, this is really cool. But here's the thing. You don't want to go overboard with all the different things Squarespace has to offer. There's like a lot that you can do on your website. That doesn't mean you should do it. Uh, if you add too many things, you get, it's just design bloating your website and your, your website's going to look like a mess. So you don't really want to add too many things. So I like these curved edges. Those are cool. Probably not going to use the highlight there um, in any meaningful way. And then we have call to action at the bottom. So I like this general setup, uh, but I'm going to rebuild it because I find that just a little bit easier instead of deleting what they have and rebuilding it again. It just saves me deleting what they've done. So let's do that same thing. We have a header section, our products, our services next, and then a call to action down below. So on our services, um, honestly, so this actually, this is a great way to start. This is uh, to provide consistency for a user throughout your website, one great thing is to keep the same layout of your main pages. So this is a good little layout for my homepage. We got text button image. So I'm gonna go into this. I'm gonna hit this save button. This is gonna save my section. And now in my save section, as you add a new section, it is right in here. Now, let's just drop it in actually. Let's just go exit and go to our services page. I want to show you uh, what this does. Hit add section, save sections, and there it is. So this is good. If I change anything in here, it's not also going to change it on my homepage. These are, once you've added it in, it's a totally unique, totally separate section. It's just yet another starting point. So let's add in some content that we want. We want, uh, obviously, not for it to say the same thing. So I'm going to say my services right there. Uh, there is a line break there. Let's move that up, expand the text. Um, underneath it, like a nice little uh, subtitle right there. Again, oh, that my looks like it's overlapping a little bit. So why don't we make that a little taller and center it up like that to give a little more space. Book now, we still want that to go there. Um, for some reason, this pushed all of this a lot larger. Let's make this a bit smaller to where we want and pull our section height back up and then replace this image. Double click, replace, upload. And let's do, what is a good one? That's a cute little puppo. Let's do that. So this is a nice little My Services. Now, let's get that little divider going, right? So I'm gonna go back into edit section. In here, we have dividers at the bottom of our sections. The section divider, that's obviously a section component. So I'm gonna edit that in our, edit sections area divider toggle that on there's a bunch of different options you can do if you click on the shape right here it's going to give you a bunch of a few just shape options i like kind of that soft curve that soft edge i want to flip it to the other side so it's going up that way we can make it a little bit taller if we wanted uh, i don't really like that let's keep it loosey-goosey um and that's that's probably pretty good and then if i put an uh uh uh, orange themed section, a bright theme section below, it'll cover it up. So let's just do that. Add section. Um, and actually, the next section I want is going to look a lot like the homepage section. So let's just copy that. We already have our services built out on our homepage. There's no need to duplicate our work here. So let's just save that section. And now it's in there. Got it. Okay. I got, I got it, Squarespace. Thank you. Keeps giving me notifications. Let's go back to services edit, and then add section, save sections, drop it in there. But instead of it being white, we know the services. We know it's our services. Uh, instead of it being white, let's hit edit section, colors, bright to. And now it bleeds into the section above. The background of it bleeds into that next section. So that looks pretty cool. Let's pull this all up so we don't have so much space right there. That's looking good and pull that up. So that looks pretty good. My services, a little bit about what we do. 
book now. We don't need these learn mores because we are on the actual learn mores. Um, so let's leave all that as is. Next, we might want uh, an FAQ section. So let's add some facts. Let's add section. We don't have that yet. Uh, let's see if there is a FAQs. There's no preset for FAQ, so we'll just start with blank. We'll add an image block on one side because that's always a nice thing. Just give a little visual. Uh... Oh, yeah, so as we're adding images, you can select from your library. Here's a list of all the images I've already added to my website. And free images, this is going to pull from Unsplash. So you, there's a bunch of free images. The premium, you'll have to pay for these. Um, but the free images, you can just use wherever you want on your website. So let's upload a new file. Um, what is a cute one? Let's do this little guy. How about that? It's a cute pup. And now I want to answer some FAQs. Let's fill this because I like filling it with the shape. Um, and let's give it our our signature curved borders at 40 pixels. Now let's add some FAQs, some questions people might have. Pull the text block over, FAQs. Let's make this a heading two. And then let's add an accordion block. Accordion blocks are great uh, because it just makes it really easy to add accordions. So double click into it. We have two tabs. Our content tab is where we can add the title of our accordion. And if you click into that, you can add the description. So what's my answer goes right here. Um, I'm not real. I'm just going to do, let's add, let's see if I can highlight our titles over here. How does it work? And then I'll fill that in later. Uh, our next question is going to be what services, what do your services include? We'll do that. And then thirdly, We'll add in uh, a little, one more question. I'll, add, I'll fill in the rest of this content later, but that looks pretty good for right now. And if I go over to the design tab, we can change the title. Maybe we can change the style of our titles to P1s uh, and then our descriptions. Those are probably still good at P2s. Let's go back to content and I can add one more. If I wanted to add another item, we could just hit that add item. It's relatively straightforward. Let's throw in Let's throw in our, another question here and say, hey, this question is actually a little more important than others. So I'm going to move this one right there to the top. So we're going to keep that there. So there we go. That's a pretty good FAQs page. Now let's add a call to action down here at the bottom. So again, we can just go back to our homepage, duplicate that homepage, our call to action down here. Uh, not duplicate it. I'm sorry. We're just going to save it because that's the better thing to do. Save, exit. Go back to services, edit, a lot of bouncing around between our pages, add section, saved section, get your groom on. And to make this a little bit different, we're going to change the image here. Let's use a different, a different photo of a puppo here. That's a cute one, huh? Let's make sure the alignment of that, that image or the focal point is right on the dog where we want it to be. I want it maybe a little, little higher. I, li I like him, I like him peeking around, peeking, peeking over the edge there. Hello, hello. And then let's add this. Um, so the the section borders always happen at the bottom of the section that you are editing. So let's add a section border to the section above. Go uh, where is it down here? Divider, and yeah, we'll just leave it at that. That looks that looks pretty good. So now we're looking, we're looking pretty good. Um, these, both of these are the same direction. So I might want to flip the direction of these uh, dividers just to make it, let's go into that and flip this one that way. Then have the other one going the other way. There we go. That looks pretty good. And now that I've done this on section, I'm using sort of this, this design language with these borders, I really should go back and use them on the home page as well. And this is one of the reasons why it's not good to just get carried away with all the little design features, because unless you're using them consistently throughout your entire website, eh, your website might not look too hot. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's go back to our home page here, edit section, toggle on the divider, and we want this to be there that looks good and then our section right above our last call to action let's again toggle on the divider and just flip the side Doo -doo -doo. and flip the 
z-axis. There we go, y-axis. Haha. -ha! Okay, and now we have our services page and our home page done. All right, now we're moving right along. We've done our services and our home page. Now let's build our about page. Um, obviously what Squarespace has given me is not gonna be what I wanna go with, so let's just start from scratch here. Um, and in this section, I'm going to show you a new section type. They're called list sections. So if you're interested in learning a little bit about those, we'll go over those here in a second. So first, I wanna just explain who I am. If, I'm, if someone's gonna get their, uh, someone's gonna have me over to their house to groom their pets, they probably are curious about who I am. So it's important to start right up front with maybe an image of me, right? We'll do an image and we'll do some big text about who I am. So let's start with my image. Let's upload a file. I am Amy. That is who I am. And we're just gonna do a big picture of Amy here. We'll do design, fill, actually shape, circle. Uh, let's make the color, let's make it a little more bold uh, just to match our website a little more. And it's just beautiful how all the text colors just sort of match immediately. It's so nice. Sorry, we got a Got my little, my pup's hungry for dinner. I need to feed my dog. So let's copy that. Let's paste my little intro. So this is just, hi, who I am. I'm Amy. I love your dog just like right away. Make, make whoever's viewing this page feel comfortable that you're inviting them, that they are inviting you into their home. That's something really important. Now let's write a little bit more about them. Uh, let's throw, let's throw some text in here. So here's, here's me, uh, just for a little visual interest, we can make this first paragraph a little bit larger and we'll align that over on the right. Now, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of up to you. I said alignment's really important um, and it really is for design, but it's fine. I mean, listen, we're not, we're not all the same person. We can kind of do whatever you want, right? So I've just gotten the rules. So if you are a designer, do whatever you want. You're a designer. You know better than me. If you're not a designer, my wife's just laughing at me right now. If you're not a designer, it's probably best to keep the rules. Keep your alignment rules. You don't want to go too far outside the square uh, here. So we're going to just keep that as is. Um, that looks pretty good. Good little hero section, right? There we go. All right. So now I want to add some images. I want to add some more photos of like what I do and allow people to see just some of my work. Now I could just, if it's just a couple images, I could add a new section and throw in some image blocks and that call it a day. That'd be fine. But I would like to keep growing this over time. I'd want to add more images. I want them to have a consistent layout, a consistent design. Um, and maybe this would also work. You use the same mental model if you want to do this with uh, testimonials or portfolio items. So rebuilding the same structure every single time can be tedious and there's just a lot of things that could go wrong. So Squarespace has given us a new section type. That section type is called list section. So if we hit add section and look throughout here, now you won't find list section listed over here, but if you scroll through some of these options, you'll see one of them, a few of them have this eye icon and it says these sections let you quickly add content items and switch between layouts without having to manually rearrange them. So that's what's really nice. It allows you to switch between layouts, look at different things without having to click and drag and move things. The other thing that th it doesn't say, but that these have is additional functionality. You can see this is like a full width page slider that works. So let's dive into that and see what this looks like. Let's just add a list section. And immediately you see there's no blocks. There's no add block button up here. I can't move things. I can click and drag this around. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, but also our edit section tab over here is a bit different. We have edit content up here. And if I click that, this, and we go over to the content tab, we can see we can add different content buckets. We also have this elements tab that shows what will show up in the section and what won't. Like we can show body for each section and stuff. There's a lot of different layouts, but what the list section does is it says you have a list of items and each item can have an image, a title, a description, and a button. You can have those four blocks. And then Squarespace has preset rearrangements of those four items uh, within the list. And so this is the full width slider right here. Uh, but we can also go into edit content, go to design. We can also do just a simple list. So they're just kind of stacked one right after another. You can adjust the columns. You could also, I don't know why this is jumping over here. It's kind of glitchy. 
Um, you can do carousel right here. And then we have a carousel of items right here. What I really like about the carousel and why I'm gonna use that, let's go to design, is we can do infinite scroll. So let's toggle on infinite scroll and then it continues to scroll. So this is for what I'm going for, this is what I wanna use. I want a carousel of images of just what I'm, me out in the wild grooming dogs, right? And then we're just gonna be able to scroll through. So let's do that. Let's go to edit content. Let's go to content and let's remove all of these items. Gonna remove each one of these. And it's jumping over here again. I'm going to, first I don't want our titles, I just want images. So I'm gonna go back to elements and for each item, I'm gonna to toggle off the title. Our section, we can add section title and section button. We can do that for the entire section, but we'll keep the title, we'll change that a bit later. That would be nice. Um, but I want images. I want a bunch of images in here. So let's just add a bunch of images. I'm going to jump into my item, upload an image. Let's use, let's use that dog. That's a good, that's a good cute dog right there. We'll upload this one. If I had title toggled on, if I had body toggled on, just to show you, if I toggle on all of these and go to my content and jump into one of my items, you'll see I have the ability to edit all that content. However, if I don't have them toggled on because I don't want them to show, they're not gonna show up right here. Now this is just a bunch of dogs, right? That doesn't really make any sense. So I'm the next, I'm gonna fast forward this, but I'm just gonna add five more images in here just so I can have more to cycle through. All right, and I got my five items in there. I also want to change my title here. Uh, we'll go to, in our content, again, this is our section title. I'll say, check out, out my pack, exclamation point. Go back, and now this is a bit tall for my images. I want them more horizontal, so let's change the image in our design tab. We can change the crop to more by a four by three ratio. Uh, we got infinite scroll toggled on. Uh, let's change, we can change some styles. We can move the arrows. I like those though. Let's go to size and spacing. Um, I want, I want more spacing between each one of these images. Space between slides, so let's just Make that a little wider, maybe, yeah, 80 pixels. That feels pretty good. Oh, it's jumping around. Um, so sometimes I've just made that change. Let's see. Sometimes Squarespace doesn't like it. Sometimes you need to save and exit. There we go. So it is working, uh, but sometimes it glitches out like that. That's all right. Oh no, my battery. Anyways, okay, so this is looking pretty good. Let's change the height of this section. Uh, media, the notice I don't have that that previous setting that I had. If I went into edit section, you have significantly less items to, to change in here because you need to change them in the content. So I'm going to change the size and spacing. Let's make our, our section a little bit smaller. Space between vertical padding. That's what I want. Vertical padding there. Um, and again, what's really nice about this is if I'm, I get here, I'm like, you know what? I don't really like this. I want a full width banner slideshow. Boom. I immediately have a full width banner slideshow, can toggle off these two things. Looks pretty good. Uh, but I do want to keep it with the carousel, so we're just going to leave it there. Um, so this is looking good. Now let's add in our last section, our call to action setting section. So let's hit add section. This was a save section from earlier. Get your groom on. Uh, let's just replace the image here. Very quick, very easy. Upload file. Let's use, um, let's use, Mm, that one, this one, let's, let's use that one. We'll move them up here. Oh, maybe that was the one I'm using, I was using. Let's move it up there, maybe a little higher, yeah. And now he's just, again, kind of peeking at me. And then the section above, let's change our edit section. Let's toggle on the divider. Let's get our divider, let's make it look something like that, and let's get rid of our Let's toggle into, uh, no, let's go back, let's turn off that border right there. And there we go. We're looking pretty darn good. All right, we're moving right along. Last we have to do is do our book now page and then we are good to launch. So this isn't horrible actually. Don't really mind this. It's very clear what's going on. Let's just change some of the copy here. Uh, I want this to say get in touch to get book an appointment because that would make a little bit more sense for what we're doing. 
Uh, let's change that. Yeah, keep that as heading two. This obviously does not need to be heading two. We want that to be heading one. Uh, maybe pull this out a little bit more so I can get these two on two lines. And then we have this nice form block. So let's take a look at that form block. This is another block type, social icons. If you just click into it, you can add social links. Um, and the nice part about this is, is your social links connect throughout your entire website. So if you add social links in here and you also toggle on social links in your header, it will toggle on the, the social links will also add in there. So that's, that's a really nice little feature. Um, so our, our form block right here, Squarespace obviously generated this for us. So let's just delete it. Uh, if we wanted to add a form block, it's just add blocks. Uh, there's a lot of different blocks in here, so play around. Um, you could just type in form and it'd pop in there, but we can just look around here too and just see all the different ones that we have, have access to. Here's form, pretty popular. Let's just pull it over. Same as like a normal uh, block, just drop it in. Let's double click into it. And you, you'll probably, you're you you'll probably noticing at this point the structure of these block settings, it's all kind of the same. We have content design, then anything that might be unique for that block type. So for, for this form, I need my name, email, services, um, dog weight, and then maybe a message. So let's change our form fields to match that. Name, email, don't need a subject. So let's hit edit, remove subject then done. And then I want to add a services. Um, and I want to do a radio box. So the difference between radio and checkbox, checkbox, you can check multiple at the same time. Radio, you can only check one at a time. And I only want to go one at a time. So I'm going to go radio. Uh, let's change our title to what services does your furry friend need. Let's add in our radio options down here. So I'm going to go into options. Option one is going to be our posh pup, clean and fluff. And then our option two is our barking beauty, cut clean and fluff. And we'll add uh, just uh, maybe just other right there, just in case there's they want something else and just give them an option to do that. Um, I do want people to toggle this, to fill this out though. So I'm gonna make this option required, this form item required, then go back. Now I want this to be above my message after the name and email, but above the message. Then let's add one final one. What is the weight of the dog? We'll say just text and we'll say, how much does your dog weigh? Question mark and just leave that as is and also make that one required. Uh, name email should be required. Message does not need to be required. So this is looking pretty good. Now let's edit the placement of this. Here's our little form. Um, again, styling of this page, don't really like this gray color. So we're just gonna go back with our bright too. That looks pretty good. Um, what I don't like is our the borders around these. I want the borders to be white. Now this, our form settings, is another one of those global settings. Um, and so we're going to go back into our site styles. Let's save the page first then go back to our site styles and we see forms is one of our options. Let's jump into that. And then we can change down here in colors. This is again, one of those little odd quirks about Squarespace. Forms does have its own little color setting. Who knew? You now. And then in here, uh, it brings you just to that other page with the form toggled. Uh, but we can look for our field border. Let's change that to white. Doesn't look like that was the right one. Oh, this is the reason. Okay, so this is important, important to note. I am in the bright two color theme right here, but what is selected here is the lightest one. So that probably should be to bright two by default, but there we go. So field border, that should be what changes. Field accessory, probably want anything white in here because the black just wouldn't look too great on there. So I'm just gonna change all those to white. And there we go. That looks pretty good. Gonna leave it at that. Don't wanna change too many things that I'm not seeing change live. If you start changing too many things and you don't see it change, what are you changing? I don't know. You probably should, don't, don't just run around and change things willy nilly. That is a recipe for a design disaster. Okay, so our form is looking pretty good. Let's save those, exit, edit back in jump back into the edit mode. Now, lastly, where do we want the results of this form to go? Let's double click into here. That's our storage option. 
So we can manage submissions right there. If someone has submitted a form, you could see those submissions right there. But email notification by default, whoever owns the website, whoever created the website, that email will be put in right here. But you can change this email to anyone else's email. Just exit out and then put in a new email and that totally works. You can also connect to some other stuff, some other fun things, but that's a little more, little more technical. Um, and then this final button down here, you can change the styles, but this all looks pretty, pretty good to me. So we're going to leave this, this as is. This is our contact page. Um, pretty happy with it. But let's throw in a map. So let's go actually go into edit because we are based in Atlanta, right? Let's add another section, just a blank section. Squarespace has map blocks. So we need to add maps in as a block. I'm just gonna type in map. There we go. And we can do this. And what would be nice, we're just gonna make this go full width and I am going to edit the section, fill screen, so it's the entire width down here. Double click on our block, and let's just put barks and bubbles, address 123 Main Street, and then uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Let's see if it'll automatically go there, and it won't automatically go there because I put in a fake address. So there we go. So there we are. We are in Atlanta. Uh, that's pretty cool. All right, you have made it to the end. Now it is time to launch our website. But before we launch, we want to take a beat and we want to go over our pre-launch checklist. So that involves first checking everything on mobile. We checked it on our homepage. We didn't go over it on the other pages because you've, you know how to do that now. But be sure you check all of your pages on mobile. Two, SEO settings. Check your SEO settings for your website in general and for each page. I'll show you where to go for each one of, for, for that in just a second here. Uh, three, check all your links. So go to every single page and click on each link. Make sure they're pointing to the right place. It's very easy to just add a button, forget to add a link, and then you never go back and make that work later. Um, and then lastly, on that contact form, the page we just built, make sure that that's pointing, that email is going to the right place especially if you're building this for someone else. It sucks to have to be getting someone else's contact submissions and you just have to forward them on. So be sure that is going to the right place. So check off those four things. Right now, let's look at SEO settings just to make sure we know what we're doing. So first, there's global SEO settings for your entire website. That is in settings. Um, and then it is in marketing, right over here. And then SEO appearance. And so right here, you can do your, your main title format. You can, this is just uh, some shorthand that Squarespace creates for your site title. And then for your pages, it's going to be the page dash whatever your site title is. So you can adjust some things in here if you like. This is the global settings, though. You could probably just leave this as is and make sure your website, each one of these pages, if we go hit the gear icon, let's not do the home page, let's do the about page go to SEO, you can put an SEO title and it'll show you a little snippet, a little preview of what it might look like if it popped up in Google. So you can put your title here about, about me, Amy, or whatever you want to do. And then put in a little bit more of a description there if you'd like to do that. If you leave it blank, it's just going to fill it with default content. So it's not horrible to leave it blank, uh, but you probably should. And then you probably should fill it out and make it work for you. Uh, and then our basic SEO settings for our entire website are going to be here, back where in the settings marketing area, and then our setting, our site description, you can put something there. Okay, so that is the basic stuff. Make sure you've done all of that. Once you've done that, now it is time to launch. In our experience, this is a place where people get really angsty and there's a lot of uh, a lot of tension and pushback for actually launching. You want to make sure things are actually perfect, and that's totally normal. I totally get it. Um, but I want you to understand there's a difference between going live and launching your website. Going live, if you're not moving your domain and just making this live and people have been going to the other domain, if you're getting a new domain and just putting your website live, other people aren't necessarily gonna go there right away. You can just make it live and send it to close friends and family and say, hey, what do you think about this? Is there anything that 
should be added, should not be added. Be careful about the feedback you're getting because they might not be your exact customers. Um, but that is just a way to go live, sort of a soft launch. And then launching is now you're proclaiming it to the world and you're telling other people, hey, come check out my website. So those are, those are two distinct steps. Um, and breaking it up can sometimes, that can make you feel a little bit more comfortable as we go through the launch process. So that's what we're going to do now. We are going to go live with our website. So I'm gonna go to settings and I need to purchase my subscription, my Squarespace subscription. Squarespace will give you a free domain for a year. If you're buying a new domain, it'll give you a free one for a year. So I suggest purchasing first. So let's hit upgrade to publish. And now it's gonna walk me through the plan. Right now for what I've done, I could do the personal plan. I will want to add some other little code snippets later, so I'm probably gonna do this business plan, uh, but we could do the personal plan if you don't need anything else. There's a bunch of other options. Um, you could go with what, whatever one, but I'm gonna do business. Select. Now I'm gonna pay monthly because I don't need to pay for this whole thing because I'm gonna cancel this after a month. Confirm selection. You guys are worth $33 a month. I want you to know that. Okay, street address, let's put this all in. Um, do, 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 do. Please don't come visit me. I'm not actually there right now anyway, so we're kind of bouncing around. So let's put in all of our info. Now I'm gonna do this. And I got all my info in there, so let's move on. And then now lastly, the final review of things. All right, and this is uh, a promo code that is working right now. Give me 10 and it's just gonna take 10% off. There might be a better promo code out there. I don't know, uh, but this is what I'm gonna use right now. Feel free to give it a shot. So confirm payment. And boom, we now have an active subscription with Squarespace. Now I want to get a domain because we get one for free. So I'm gonna hit get my domain. And you see where this brought me. This wasn't some special place. I had to go through that exact thing. Let's just get out of this. Settings and then domains. So this is where we go. If you want to connect this website with a domain you have already purchased or you're getting a new one, this is where you start. So go to domains and say get a domain. And it's very straightforward walking through. The one I want to get is called, I pre-looked it up before here. It is barksandbubblesatl.com. There is a lot of Barks and Bubbles websites out there. Uh, who would have thought? Actually, probably anyone who did think about it. Check out. And there we go. So now, doesn't look like it's giving me a free domain with this one. Maybe that has stopped. So I'm going to put in my information here. So you might be wondering if you're filling this out, why is this asking me for my information here again? Uh, this is just like sort of a global ICANN, the, the company that sort of struggle, controls domains. They require this information uh, to prevent spam and stuff. So that's the reason they're asking. Do, 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 confirm payment. Do, do, do. Okay, so now I have purchased my subscription, my monthly Squarespace subscription and my annual domain here. So now I have both of those. It's gonna ask us where you're joining. I would love it if you said YouTube and said Will Dash Myers. That would make me feel really good if you would do that and hit submit. Um, this is asking for email verification. So I need to go verify my email. So I'm gonna do that real quick and come right back. All right, this is what the email looks like. Just this little verify now from the ICANN Corporation. ICANN requires it. So I'm gonna hit verify now. It's gonna bring me to this page right here. Successful, okay. Um, and now here we are back in my domains. If we go back to domains, uh, we don't have that notification anymore. Um, and now I can click on that. Let's see if this one is it's automatically active. So if I open it up, it says it's not private yet. So you might see this error for a little bit right after you launch a new domain. It's gonna have to go through its system. It could take up to 48 hours. Usually it's like within an hour, sometimes even less. If you are running into issues at this point, um, after 48 hours, or actually even within a day, message Squarespace support. Sometimes there's things they can go in and do to make it go a little bit faster. Just let them know your domain isn't, uh, working. So I am going to go to website now and we're going to site availability and we're going, now we have public. 
Now we have the public option. So I'm just going to hit public and hit save. And there we go. So I'm going to, we're going to try this one more time, see if it has updated yet. Oop. Oh, and now we have a live website. See how fast that was? Now we have a live website up on the internet. Bada bing, bada boom. I can submit a form. It'd go right to my email. Lovely. All right, we're almost done here, but a couple more things I want to let you know about just before you go off and build all your websites and stuff. Number one, Squarespace can do a lot. There, we just barely scratched the surface here, but as you probably saw, as we add, added more pages, we, have, we can create blogs, we can add a store, a whole e-commerce store with digital products, physical products. You can add portfolios, you can manage events in here, you can do an entire course, you can put your content, a course, you can teach something in Squarespace. You can make membership areas, specific areas of your websites that only members can access if they pay you. There's so many things you can do with Squarespace. We are just now touching the surface of it. So look down below in the description of this video. We will add links to more resources as we build them out. Also, give us a little like, add a little comment if this was helpful to you. Would love for that. Uh, that sort of helps the algorithm, the big algorithm. And then the other thing is Squarespace says a lot, number one. Number two, you will inevitably run into roadblocks. You will run into areas where you want to do something that Squarespace just doesn't handle, and you probably need extra code, you need to ask someone, you need some additional help. So one place to go, obviously, will-myers.com. This is my website. I got a ton of Squarespace plugins. Uh, I have a little membership if you want to learn more about code. I got a ton of free articles about how to do other stuff. So feel free to just look around in here if you want something. The other great place is the Squarespace forum right here. Forum. Uh, the Squarespace forum is excellent. Uh, you can join. If, once you are a, if you are a contributor on three websites, then you can join the Squarespace Circle group, but there is a bunch of uh, bunch of just resources on here. This place is excellent. And then lastly, this is an excellent website if you have any questions. I've gone here and to say, how does Squarespace work? You can just ask this website questions. It's very, very helpful. All right, that's it. Thanks for hanging in there. There was a lot that we went over today, but I hope you learned something. I hope you learned a little bit more about website building, and I hope you gained a little bit of confidence in yourself in website building, whether you're building websites for you or for your friends or whether you're doing it for a business that you're trying to grow. Whatever it is, thanks for hanging in there. Keep building cool things, and I'll see you next time.